Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let's begin lectures 19. So in the last lecture, the end, we started discussing uh, uh, nickel corrosion. I would like to say that it is whether that nickel would corrode in a particular solution and the problem statement was, if you see the problem statement, this was the problem statement. We need to calculate theoretical tendency of nickel to corrode in deaerated water pH 8. Assume that the corrosion products are H 2 and NiOH hole 2. And we have the data temperature pressure 298 Kelvin and 1 atmosphere. Uh, solubility product of nickel hydroxide is 1.6 into the minus 16 and standard reduction potential of uh, nickel is minus 0 0.25 volt. And we did these calculations, uh, you can just go back and then see these calculations. We just wanted to see what is the concentration of nickel ion that could be present uh, in the solution when we have this uh, NiOH hole 2 product formation. And when we have NaOH, NiOH hole 2, and this NiOH hole 2 would dissociate into Ni plus plus and OH minus ions. And we know the pH of the solution and from the pH we can calculate what is the concentration of hydrogen ion and then accordingly we can also calculate the concentration of OH minus ion and that concentration will be in equilibrium as set by the solubility product of NiOH hole 2. Now, if you see that since the pH is uh, 8, so we know the hydrogen ion concentration is 10 to the power minus 8. And since hydrogen ion concentration, the product of H plus and OH minus ion concentration is 10 to the power minus 14, so we get OH minus concentration was uh, OH minus ion concentration to be 10 to the power minus 6. And now we have to look at this particular equation which talks about the equilibrium between Ni plus plus and OH minus and uh, it is forming NiOH hole 2 and this NiOH hole 2 has got its uh, own dissociation constant. So, we start from here. Now, if we see this NiOH hole 2 it can have equilibrium between Ni plus 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 2 OH minus. Now, we know that OH minus ion concentration in the solution is 10 to the power minus 6. Now, from Ksp consideration would be equal to concentration of NiOH 2 OH whole 2 divided by hole 2. So, now this is a solid product which is precipitating out. So, we can consider to be 1 and then we get to N i plus plus ion concentration which is K s p divided by O h ion hole 2. So, here it should be we made a mistake. So, this 2 should be here square because we are considering the dissociation constant. So, now if we know this we know Ksp 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 16 and here 10 to the power minus 6 square. So, it ends up 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 4. So, I am just putting unit concentration unit which could be mole per centimeter cube. 
Now, once we have this, then initially we are assuming that nickel is corroding. So, if we have an electrode, if we see this two electrode, one side is hydrogen electrode and one side is nickel electrode and when nickel is dissolving and that is of course, forming N i O H hole 2. Now, since nickel is dissolving and hydrogen is evolving, so this is H 2 is evolving. So, hydrogen plus 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 2 E equal to H 2, this cathodic reaction is taking place on this particular electrode. Now, if we have a connection like this uh, with the salt bridge, then if we connect them, the current should flow from this way to this way. So, this is positive end, this is my negative end. So, this would be my cathode and this would be my anode. So, this cell is also replicating the situation here. How it is replicating? Because in this case, I have a solution with a pH 8 and in that we have a nickel piece. So, this nickel piece is forming a half cell which is similar like this and hydrogen evolution on the surface of the nickel piece is mimicking the hydrogen electrode on the other side. So, this is the solution and this is the solution. Here, these are these two half electrodes have been electrodes have been broken. So, the entire reaction is broken into two hubs that means, two half cell reactions which is one side is N i minus 2 e equal to N i plus plus another side is this one. Now, when we have this situation because we are assuming there is a nickel is corroding. So, then this side should be always positive this side should be always negative. So, now the potential E 1 which is set up on this right side should be greater than the potential on the left side and this potential of course, our convention is we will take reduction potential. So, E 1 which is a reduction potential for H plus going to H 2 and E 2 reduction potential for N i plus plus going to N i. And in order to have nickel going into N i plus plus, so this E 1 should be E 2. And if E 1 is greater than E 2, so the cell potential which is del E is nothing but E 1 minus E 2 should be positive. And if it is positive, then we see that since we know del G for the reaction is equal to nothing but minus N F del E or the cell potential. And if this is positive, so del G would be negative and once we get del G to be negative, then we can say that the reaction is spontaneous. And since we are considering nickel is dissolving, so nickel dissolution is spontaneous or corrosion is nickel corrosion is spontaneous. Now, then our main interest should be to find out the reduction potential on this side and the reduction potential on that side. So, let us find out. Now, we have all the ideas, all the data because nickel ion concentration we know which is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 4 unit, we can consider mole, molar unit sorry, we can consider molar unit. So, now H plus is equal to 10 to the power minus 8. Now, let us see what potential it would it. So, A E 2 equal to nothing but E N i plus plus N i equal to E 0 N i plus plus N i plus R T by 2 F since 2 electrons are involved for this reduction reaction L n 
Ni plus plus ion concentration which is oxidant and nickel ion concentration, nickel concentration which is the nickel metal. So, this we know minus 0 0.25 volt and if it is 298 Kelvin and 1 atmosphere pressure. So, then this particular quantity becomes 0 0.0591 we have calculated before 2 and this becomes then log because when we take logs a 2.303 that conversion factor from ln to log need to be multiplied with R t by f factor. So, this becomes minus 0 0.25 plus 0 0.0591 by 2 log 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 4. So, we get the value. So, the value becomes, so this becomes divided by 2 into 0 0.0591 equal to minus 0 0.25 minus 0 0.0591. 1 1 2 volt equal to minus 0 0.36 2 volt. So, E 2 is nothing but this much. Now, we can calculate E 1 which is this side nothing but E h 2 equal to minus 0 0.0591 pH. We have done it this particular calculation before, before because E 0 h plus h 2 equal to 0. So, E 1 becomes minus 0 0.0591 into 8. So, this becomes minus 0 0.473 volt. So, del E would be equal to E 1 minus E 2 which is minus 0 0.473 minus 0 0.362 plus would be equal to Zero point one 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 volt with a minus sign. There is a minus sign here. So del G for the overall free energy change for the system and the overall reaction is Ni plus two H plus equal to Ni plus 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 H two this is the overall reaction. So, for that the change would be minus n f del E and here n is equal to 2. So, 2 into 96500 into 0 0.111 volt and since there is a minus sign here. So, it becomes plus into equal to plus 2 1 384.4 joule and remember this is a plus sign. So, for a spontaneous process del G should have been less than 0 as we have seen before if we see uh, uh, this part you see this is the section I am talking about. So, del G negative means spontaneous del G positive means non spontaneous. So, now here we are getting spontaneous and del G positive non spontaneous and here we are getting del G positive. So, it becomes definitely the this particular process becomes non spontaneous means the assumption we had that the nickel would corrode 
that assumption does not hold true. So, if this particular process is non spontaneous, then the reverse process should be spontaneous. So, the nickel ion rather would get reduced. So, nickel corrosion is not feasible in the present condition. Now, let us see. So, this is the uh, in order to find out whether the nickel would corrode or not, we are doing the calculations and all those considerations starting from here. If you see uh, this section, this particular slide, uh, we see that entire lot of calculations and minor finally, our primary interest is to find whether del g is negative for the process or del g is positive for the process. Now, let us see if we maintain uh, all other this particular N i O H hole 2 that is forming and if the temperature is fixed. So, if we maintain this particular K S P constant of N i O H hole 2 is not changing. So, it is still 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 16 and if we change P H let us say P H becomes 3. Let us see what happens. So, if P H becomes 3, then I can find out H plus ion concentration or I can do a different route. Since, we have seen P H plus P O H equal to 14. So, P H is equal to 3 plus P A O H equal to 14. So, P O H equal to 14 minus 3 equal to 11. So, this can give me the concentration of P O H minus ion is equal to 10 to the power minus 11. Now, K is P remains same. So, N i plus plus O H minus whole 2 equal to K S P equal to 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 16. So, that time nickel ion concentration becomes 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 16 divided by 10 to the power minus 11. Two is going to be uh, 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 22 minus 16 equal to 1.6 into 10 to the power uh, 6. This is the concentration level of nickel ion concentration in that solution. So, we can have again calculate E 2 E 0 which is minus 0 0.25 plus 0 0.0591 by 2 log N i plus plus ion concentration and this side becomes into P H is a P H is equal to 3. So, I would get 0 0.0591 into 3 it goes to minus 0 0.1773 or I can just simply say 0 0.1 volt and this side becomes plus so that uh, concentration becomes 1.6 exponential 6 0 0.183. So, this becomes minus 0 0.25 0 0.07 volt. Now, if I try to find out delhi is equal to E 1 minus E 2. So, that becomes ok. So, we can find out daily again 
and then del beca delhi becomes 0 0.177 minus or which will become 0 0.07 which goes to uh, 0 0.107. So, I still see that uh, uh, I get a negative daily value. So, even at a pH of 3 which is highly acidic I could see if this data other data holds other data hold uh, other data are just like the way we have considered still we could see that the daily becomes negative. So, daily becomes negative means del G becomes positive. So, then again it becomes non spontaneous. Non spontaneous. So, that means uh, we have to do a entire lot of calculations in order to see whether del G becomes negative or positive. Just like that we can have other calculations, but instead of doing this this entire calculations to see whether the del G becomes negative for a particular corrosion process. We can also have another route to understand whether the system or the metal would corrode in the water system or not when it is dipped in aqueous medium with certain pH level. So, that information can be obtained from a particular diagram which is called Bay diagram. So, this pore bay diagram is nothing but a plot between pH and potential. When a metal is exposed to aqueous medium and whenever we are talking about a metal is exposed to aqueous medium we take following species oxygen H 2 O H plus ion O H minus ion and of course, metal and metal plus plus ion or rather if we do not know what is the oxidation number we can consider n plus ion. So, m n plus this m is nothing but a metal. Now, whenever we have uh, a existence of metal ion then there could be possibility of formation of m oxygen n this oxide can form or m OH whole n this hydroxide can form. So, generally these oxides or hydroxides they have very low solubility product and that is what they tend to settle down. So, now whenever we expose a metal in this particular system containing such ions there could be possibility that oxygen is not present, but hydrogen ion would always be there. Now, there could be possibility of presence of oxygen and of course, you once you have a metal there could be possibility of formation of metal ion and if the system situation permits we can have oxide or hydroxide. So, that time we can have the stability of different phases for example, this phase, this phase or this phase and this phase even this one all those phases we can have some information from that diagram. And we are also we are forgetting another important species which is hydrogen H 2. So, there could be possibility of hydrogen evolution also when a metal is dipped in an aqueous medium just like zinc when it is exposed to dilute HCl where we have a pH less than 7 it is acidic then we see that hydrogen bubble forms and of course, Ni plus plus ion also forms. So, this is a stability diagram between pH and potential. So, this diagram has two axes one axis becomes this pH another axis becomes potential which is in volt and this is in pH 
which is a number. Now, there we can have a kind of if you see a Pobe diagram of certain metal, we can see certain kind of this kind of diagram or we can have a diagram like this. we can have a diagram like this. This is E versus P H also. So, this diagram if we see carefully, then we will see that this is metal, this is metal ion and this is metal hydroxide N or M 2 O N. So, this kind of boundary we can have. Now, from this diagram without going for that calculation detailed calculations that whether del G becomes negative or not to understand whether the corrosion would take place or not. If we look at this diagram, then immediately we can make out that whether the metal would corrode or not. So, this is the benefit of this diagram. So, our next level of understanding would be how to construct this diagram and what are the informations we can snatch out of this diagram. And remember this diagram plays a very, very important role in electrochemistry and specially in corrosion, because then corrosion sometimes you will hear that the metal is passivating. And this diagram can also tell you whether the metal would actually passivate or not. So, those information definitely we, could, we can snatch out from this diagram and it would also enable us to find out the tendency of the metal to remain as metal or metal line that means corrosion or passivating state without going for detailed calculation the way we have done for nickel. So, our next topic would be Pobe diagram. Let us stop here, we will continue our discussion in our next lecture. Thank you.